In this podcast episode, we discuss why video is the next greatest thing in the Instagram algorithm, how to utilize the right type of rhetoric and approach sales through video that's going to feel comfortable and build that know, like, and trust with your client. And lastly, we'll cover how to create and utilize static images through Canva into video in under 30 seconds. Thank you guys so much for listening and enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to the End in Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin, the owner of Meraki Media Management. The End in Mind is a place where we come to share stories, tips, and strategies of many entrepreneurs, creatives, business owners, and just some people that aren't willing to live the traditional lifestyle. We talk about how to live outside of the box today and how to incorporate what really is important in your life to keep that end goal always in mind. Again, if you would like to reach out to me in any type of way, you can find me on Instagram at Meraki underscore media underscore management. And I hope to hear from you all soon. Thanks so much and enjoy our show. Welcome back to the End in Mind podcast. I'm your host, Caitlin. I'm so excited to have you all here. Thank you for tuning in. Honestly, I have enjoyed recording these podcasts so much. I've been hearing from a few of you here and there that you are enjoying them as well. And it really does make my heart so warm. I cannot tell you guys, and I'm sure you all can understand this as well, when you're producing content and choosing topics for something like a podcast or even your content strategy, it can feel like you're throwing spaghetti at the wall, even if you know that what you're providing is probably something that your client needs to hear. The other day, I was chatting with someone in the DMs and they mentioned that they feel like they're constantly producing educational content and they're not converting, they're not seeing the feedback that they wanted to, and they're even sharing like, overly sharing educational content. They feel like they're going above and beyond and not getting anything in return. We can get into, you know, today, which we will, why that's not converting for that potential person that I was chatting with. But also, it's just so rewarding when you do feel and hear people that are acknowledging your work and showing up and saying, thank you so much for this education. So, Thank you all for going out of your way and letting me know how much you're enjoying the show. It really does make me feel so excited and I just can't wait to share more of my knowledge, more of my stories with you guys, potentially have you all on, right? Because you are the ones that make this podcast possible. So why can't we start to enter into conversations together, right? And learn and grow with one another. And that is what I love about Instagram DM so much because if there's a certain topic that sticks out to you all, sometimes we'll hop in the DMs and we chat about it and it's just really fun. It allows us to grow and learn together and that's really what I believe in. You know, I believe that we're learning something new every day when we open our eyes. So there's always more knowledge. There's always more education for us to gain and I just appreciate learning from you all as well. So thank you guys so much for being here and On that topic of the direct messaging and creating educational content that isn't converting, we are going to dive into today all about this algorithm adjustment. We also talked about this in last week's podcast, but we're going to get really in depth with this video content and how to actually start converting off of this platform using video. So I have many business coaches in my circle that are constantly telling us that IGTV is one of the highest converting forms of video. And I have to agree, hands down, hand over fist, I would say even when I started my platform almost 
three years ago, which is crazy to say out loud, IGTV was high and converting then. So now it has to be even more so, right? But of course it's more saturated. It's a little bit more competitive. So how can we start to stand out online and actually give the knowledge that our clients want and need? So today we are going to get into that, but first we're going to talk about the Instagram algorithm and again, why and how we can start to approach knowing Instagram as a business, knowing how to observe the content that's drawing you in so you can start to utilize those types of concepts and recreate and plug them into your own business. So when we talk about the algorithm being updated and this new push for video content, really what Instagram cares about is the amount of eyeballs that are on the application every single day. So the more time that you spend actually on the app, the more Instagram can start to charge for ads, for their potential clients, right? And they can even start to just charge for clicks and all these other different ways of marketing ins and outs of the Instagram backend. So really all they care about is eyeballs and the amount of time that you're spending on the application. Now we know longer form of video is going to keep people on the application for longer periods of time. So that is why they're making this shift. And I have a very good feeling that a lot of people, especially in the younger generation, are now utilizing TikTok more so because they can scroll for hours and it's easy to get stuck in the scroll hole. And that's something that they actually enjoy doing and spending their time doing. Being knowledgeable about their competitors, which I know we did touch on last week, I just think that it's really important that we all drive that point in home so we know how to approach this application as new and upcoming trends continue to come out because there are always going to be new trends, right? We're in a huge change pivot in society currently. We're emerging from a very dark time, if you can even call it an emergence, right? Coming to a close of a possible chapter, but there are many, many obstacles to come ahead. And the more so as we can take advantage of this shift in society and be knowledgeable about these usages, we will be able to get ahead of the marketing trends and position ourselves further out in front of these clients. So in the beginning of COVID, this was something, this video type of feature was something we had been playing around with legitimately, I would say a year and a half ago. So we were already utilizing this type of video content. And when I say this type of video content, I mean putting up a static Instagram post and having some sort of movement to it. So when you go on Canva, you can click animate to your Instagram post, highlight the entire thing, go up to the top and click animate. And that will turn any of your Instagram posts into a live moving video. And what this does is it allows and draws the eye in. So the movement causes people to say, oh, okay, I'm gonna stay on this post for an extra three or four seconds because I wanna see what the words are saying. And then if it resonates with me, I'm gonna drop down and read the rest of the caption. And this content was so high clickable and high converting for my page back a year and a half ago, I knew that video was going to be a concept that was coming in the near future, right? So when you test out all of these different types of content and you're not afraid to test things out, you will be able to get ahead of trends. Of course, that was not something that I was promoting yet because it was just a thought and we don't teach anything until we know it for sure and we also have experimented with it. So we've been experimenting with this video type of content for over a year and a half, this static type of post image moving. It has really helped. Even our reach and impressions has gone up so much from using this type of content. We are now utilizing this type of content on a lot of our clients' pages and it's been very rewarding. We're getting a lot more engagement, we're getting more comments, and we're getting more website clicks, which I think is a really important feature to talking about Instagram content. Because if you don't 
position your content in a correct manner, there's no way that you are funneling your followers to anything, right? So there are several different types of content that you can work in. You can work in authentic types of content, which is just sharing your life, sharing your life story, and really about relationship building. And then you can share promotional types of content, which is really going to drive your business goals forward. So we would also call this a form of marketing content, right? Which is actually creating a sales funnel that's going to send people to your podcast, for example, or to your newsletter or to your website, whatever you may be promoting that week based around your goals. That is the promotional type of content. And then there's, of course, all different other types of content, educational content, which is just offering free value, which is going to allow you to draw more followers in and build that know, like, and trust over time with those followers. So this is all how we approach Instagram. We approach it by creating these sales funnels for our clients. So video is a great additional aspect to this because it allows us to build that know, like, and trust with a potential user that has never come to your page before. So when I started my tips of the week, Shout out to my best friend, Nicole. She is amazing. She is the first person that actually told me to start an IGTV um, channel and come on it weekly with my tips of the week. And this was right when I started my business. It was very green. I didn't really know how to market. And these IGTVs have now been archived in my Instagram account for almost three years. So this is a place that I will send people that don't know me well to go find out more information. How do I approach this application? Is it in alignment with their needs and what they believe? How can they get really great tips and takeaways from me for free right now just by hitting a follow button on Instagram, right? And then once they hit that follow button, I'm posting to my Instagram stories through video every day. I'm talking directly into the camera. I'm using words like you. I'm using words like we, us, community, right? And really drawing them in so they feel a part of the Meraki Media family. So that is why video is so important for business owners. When you start to utilize the right type of rhetoric while you're on video, that's really the key piece. Just putting up a video, unless you do something like construction or you're a service-based business where it's visually appealing, you can show the progress, right, of what you are doing in that 30 second clip or in that five minute IGTV video or in that quick little story, right? You can take them through the entire process. That's what you should be thinking about. So if you can't utilize rhetoric, right? If you are more of a service-based business that doesn't involve any coaching of any sort, that's when you can do something like a time-lapse video or as I mentioned, one of those IGTV clips or a story clip. But if you are a coach, that is where the rhetoric does come in and is very important. And I would argue even for those service-based businesses, the rhetoric's important as well. Because when you are creating these time-lapse videos, you should be talking over them or there should be music attached that fits to the video, right? That has some sort of exciting, amped up music. And when you release the after photo, there's like a drop in the tempo or like the bass is coming out, right? So you want to think about all of these key pieces and creating that emotional base content. So if you don't put music over it, maybe you talk about what you're doing in the process. For example, when I was building my office, funny enough, my following was really invested in the home decor aspect of it because they wanted to see where I create, what I do, why that's so important to me creating and showing up for you guys on a daily basis 
of course, having an office and a little getaway space in my home is important, right? Especially because Sean and I both work from home now. So having some space was a key piece to my business and being able to show up for my clients. Do you guys see what I'm saying here with the video? It has to somewhat involve your brand. So if you're not coming up with the rhetoric, these are a few questions that I want you to start asking yourself. What free value can I bring to my client today, which I know is going to solve one of their problems for free? Don't think about always selling them a product or always selling them a service. How can you offer them something today? For example, you're a beauty based service business. How can you teach somebody a lymphatic drainage massage on their face to relieve some tension or toxins that may be lying under their skin? How can you then show them with cool therapy and ice cubes how to, you know, bring down some of that inflammation, right? I'm not an esthetician, so none of this is obviously on point. My mom is an esthetician, so if you need help, you can always DM me and we'll ask her. Plus, all of you are the tend to be beauty based businesses. So that was why I figured that would be fitting. But you all hear what I'm saying. It's not like come by my service. You know, you have to come work with me in order for you to see results. That is very turn offy from clients and also just turn offy in general, right? Like we don't want to know that we need other people to be able to quote unquote make it in life. We want to know that we can be empowered to do it on our own. And maybe those coaches or services are just going to add additional great ways to get there faster or, you know, add some really great value to our life or our experience overall. We don't want to know that we have to go back for, you know, a service every day for the rest of our lives. That can feel really daunting. So the more freedom that you can put back in your client's hands, the more rewarded you will get in the long run because that builds that know, like, and trust with them. They know that you aren't, you know, depending on them coming back to you or feeling the pressure of always buying a service. That is really turn off you for clients. I'm going to share a personal story right now, which I just think is really beneficial, again, for any service-based business. So my therapist actually is one of the people that really made me start to think about this type of sales when I've done sales trainings in the past. This is something I've spoken about, but it never really clicked with me because I had never had somebody say it in an eloquent way how she did. So when I was chatting with her, she said at the very beginning of the sales pitch, right? I asked her, you know, it was daunting to me to get into therapy because I was nervous that maybe I wouldn't be able to handle my emotions on my own or what if I couldn't get in touch with her and I was having a panic attack of some sort. Stuff happens, right? Like we've all been going through a lot these past few years and months, you know, like life happens and that would make me really stressed out. So when I asked her about it, her response was, you know, Caitlin, my job is to give you the tools to be able to go and live your life independently without me. My goal is to get you to an emotional or mental state where you don't need this type of support on a weekly basis. You know, maybe we go down to every other week or maybe once a month when you're ready and you feel a little bit more stronger independently. And at that moment, I knew that she was the person that I wanted to work with. Flat out, I knew she was going to be my therapist. I trusted her. I knew that if I came to her and said, you know, one week I wasn't going to be able to make it or I really needed to cut back down on our hours together because maybe something came up with work and I just didn't have time to fit it into my schedule. I knew that she was going to be aware and also take that information well and be able to support me in growing in my life and not holding me back, you know? It really does, it feels like you're holding someone back when you tell them, okay, well opt in to this mentorship program or whatever it may be, and you have to opt in for the rest of your life every month, right? That's a lot of heavy expenses for someone or even once a week, right? It feels heavy, but when people open up and tell you, no, I'm gonna give you the tools to be able to do this on your own, that's really empowering. And it also gives your ego and I think your mental side 
the awareness of, I can do this. You know, with therapy, it was so powerful in that sense. It was like, you know, wow, I really can do this. And I needed to hear someone with a degree in this say it to me to come out of my funk. And it changed my life. And that was exactly how I wanted to approach my sales with my clients. It's one of the reasons why I love training people because management, again, is only really for the clients that don't have the time or have built their business to a point where they are so busy that marketing and Instagram is has to be a side piece. You know, their lives are busy. They have a lot of things going on. It doesn't fit into their daily schedule. But our trainees, they want to be present on the application. Maybe they actually really enjoy Instagram, but they don't have the tools on how to best apply it. It's the same thing as therapy, right? And approaching it in life. So when you Think about how you like to be sold to. Including that type of rhetoric in your videos is going to help you convert off of this platform better than anything else. So when you can convey to your client, hey, yes, you come and you buy this product from me. I sign you up for a monthly newsletter, but there's no pressure to rebuy. You know, you can just tell me that you don't need product and then you call me next month and then I get you signed up, you know, for next month with some new product. Maybe you want to try something different and just being very lax and easygoing with your clients will help you again create that know, like and trust so that they don't feel pressure. I think in this online space, especially when you're selling through something like video and you're like, buy my product buy my service. This is all you need in life to succeed. It's so heavy, right? (laughs) You guys know what I'm saying when you see this type of guerrilla marketing, right? Which sometimes does draw people in. And that's perfect for those types of clients and those people that work in that type of coaching space. But if you're being drawn into my podcast, the way that we organically market the approachable way of selling, then most of the times our clients are going to be running running in the other direction when something like that is said or they're just so overwhelmed that it seems like way too heavy to even start to unpack in our brains. So the simpler you can make your pitch in video, give them two, three amazing, great tips, hop off your video in under three minutes. I have to say I am guilty of the longer IGTV, uh, especially if you scroll back in my IGTVs, they get really long, but I was giving so many really great tips that I wanted my following to benefit from. So I stopped cutting myself off and especially because I didn't have the podcast then IGTV was a great way for me to build that know like and trust so that when I did launch my podcast I already had you know 2,000 followers that knew that I was going to show up and give overly give value on my podcast so all of these ways of thinking for your sales funnels is going to be really important as you approach this video type of platform. And the last thing I want to say about this algorithm shift is allowing yourself grace. You don't need to be putting out a video every day. You don't need to be putting out a video, you know, three days a week. You can put out one video a week if that is all that's going to work for you. But make sure that you're being present on the application at least five days a week. And what does that mean? You know, showing up on your Instagram stories, popping up a quote image, utilizing some of those static Canva images that I just shared about turning them into a video. I'm also going to link my Instagram below here for anybody that doesn't follow me yet. I posted a ton of reels about how to convert your static Canva images into videos like legitimately in under 30 seconds on Canva. It's so easy. And you guys can check that out by clicking the link below. So if you need help with this. Also, if you have any issues, please do not be afraid to reach out to me via DM. I know I said that in the beginning of this podcast, but make sure that you guys do. We even can help you edit some of your videos. I've done that for clients in the past. We've also done some consulting with clients. So we'll help them come up with the right type of rhetoric to say while they're on video. And then we'll even help them create that caption as 
as well that's going to draw some more people in. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I hope you really got some great takeaways. I know we got into a little bit more of salesy rhetoric rather than video, but I think that it's so important to know what to say while you're on video if you are going to show up with your face and not really just show a service and maybe you're just talking over. You still have to know that rhetoric, right? So again, if you guys need support with this, don't be afraid to slide into my DMs and I will see you guys next week. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for listening to The End in Mind. I would like to remind you all, if you haven't yet reached out to me on Instagram, we are at Meraki underscore media underscore management. It will be in our show notes as well. If you would like to reach out to me, we always offer free coaching through Instagram based around our Instagram training and our business Instagram practices. If you need any type of support, please do not hesitate to reach out to me there. And we also offer several different types of consulting and training packages if you're looking for a little bit more in-depth tips. So thank you all for listening in. And of course, I want you all to keep the end in mind as you continue with your day and or work week. Have a great week and I will see you all next time. I don't know. Everyone has a podcast now. Well, not really. What is true is that, according to Nielsen statistics, 55% of the U.S. population, that's over 155 million people, have listened to a podcast, and 24% of the population, that's 68 million people, listen to podcasts weekly. And these numbers continue to trend upward. What's also true is that over 75% of all podcasts fade away after the first few episodes. It could be for a variety of reasons, lack of strong concept, poor production value, people not realizing how much time needs to be dedicated to it, or simply just not knowing how to get the word out about podcasts. That's where WeKnowPodcasting.com comes in. At WeKnowPodcasting.com, we have a combined 25 years of podcast experience, and we can help you achieve your podcasting goals. Whether you need help starting a new podcast or want to take your currently active podcast to the next level, we got you. From consultations to concept development, from theme music to editing, promotion, animation, graphics, you name it and we're here to help. Don't become another failed podcast statistic. Let us guide you and help your show become a success. Check out the website at WeKnowPodcasting.com. And even if you're on the fence, don't hesitate to reach out. We're friendly guys, we're passionate about pods, and we're here to help.